Greetings! Welcome to another Geek Moment. The focus of today's festivities are Enhancement Mode Gallium Nitride Field Effect Transistors from EPC Corporation. These amazing little devices are opening up some new frontiers in power conversion with their lower RQ product, smaller but still positive RDS on Tempco, uh, zero diode reverse recovery, a whole other bunch of benefits that really make them amazing devices. Now, in speaking of an RQ products, what we're talking about is the product of effects on state resistance with the amount of charge that it takes to change the voltage across one of the parasitic capacitances that's present between the terminals of any real life FET. The R is responsible for conduction losses and the Q causes switching losses and also limits the maximum practical switching frequency. But for a given generation of FET technology, the RQ product is pretty much constant. Reducing R causes a proportional increase in Q so there's a trade-off between switching and conduction losses. Developments in FET technology that reduce the RQ product improve the trade-off overall, allowing both switching and conduction losses to be reduced. Silicon FETs have been undergoing this kind of refinement for 30 or 40 years now, and they're approaching the limits of what's theoretically possible. EGAN FETs, on the other hand, are a new technology that still has a lot of room for improvement, but even so, the early generation devices that are available now have significantly better RQ products compared to silicon FETs with comparable voltage and current ratings. But as cool as that is, right now you're probably wondering what's the deal with the headgear. We were trying to find a way of demonstrating these new FETs. Uh, I kicked the idea around for a while and came up with the concept of an arc lamp. It's a really old lighting technology, first demonstrated around the 1800s, applications requiring a very intense light source. They operate by uh, striking an arc between a carbon rod and uh, another carbon electrode, sort of like this one, that happens to be coated in copper. Now, the problem with carbon arc lamps is that arcs tend to have a negative resistance characteristic, meaning that for a given arc length, the voltage across the arc actually tends to drop with increasing current flow. That's okay, but you tend to end up with problems because when you're striking an arc, you're initially starting with zero arc length. So you end up getting a whole lot of current and a whole lot of light but electrode erosion becomes a problem pretty quickly. Clearly, some means of current control is called for here. These little evaluation boards um, EPC makes in order, order to allow folks to evaluate their products more easily. Um, they contain two EGAN FETs. Those are these actual little blue things here, um, put together in a half-bridge configuration along with a suitable driver circuit. Um, you just apply power for the gate drive circuit here, your control logic circuit here, and then the three pins of the half bridge node are brought out via 0.1 inch pin headers on the back, a standard header, eight pins per node of the half bridge. A few other ingredients need to go into the mix before we have a workable current controller though, since the EPC half bridge boards don't provide any control logic beyond some very basic shoot through protection. You need to monitor the low current and something to generate a suitable control signal. Now the circuit I'm using to generate a control signal for the EPC board is shown in simplified form here, and it operates the EPC half bridge as a hysteretic synchronous buck converter. A current sense resistor here measures the current flow through the low branch of the circuit, which consists of the electrodes in a ballast inductor. That current signal is amplified and fed into two comparators, which feed into the asynchronous set and reset inputs of a flip-flop, the output of which is used as the control signal for the EPC half bridge. Now when the current flow through the load falls below a lower limit, the output of the flip-flop is set and the load is connected to the main power supply through the top fed and the half bridge, causing the current through the load to increase. And when the current exceeds an upper limit, the flip-flop is reset. And the lower fed and the half bridge turns on, allowing the current to recirculate through ground, using up the energy stored in the ballast inductor to power the arc. The current through the load then falls and the process repeats at a frequency governed mostly by the supply voltage, the voltage across the arc, and the value of the ballast inductor. And because that process draws current from the main supply in very short, abrupt bursts, an RC filter is used in front of the half bridge to dampen ringing on the supply leads that might otherwise exceed the voltage rating of the half bridge. Now we have the uh, circuit set up here, but let's see if we can light our lamp here. So here we're looking at the current waveforms. The yellow is the voltage at the midpoint of the half bridge. The green is the current through the arc. And the blue is the supply voltage for the whole thing. Uh, we're at 10 amps per volt here on the current probe so that if we uh, do a single capture here, things clear up nicely. You can see here we've been getting uh, about 3.8 amps through the arc at 40 volts, switching at about 210 kHz. So we're 
finding a fair amount of power with these FETs. If we take out the thermal imager here, they're not really getting all that warm. However, if we zoom in on this waveform, take a look at the rise time, it's about two nanoseconds. The EPC EGAN FETs can switch fast enough to do things like build high step down ratio buck converters that also have a very high switching frequency. That's something you couldn't do before the EGAN FETs and it could allow you to eliminate entire power conversion stages in your in your designs. EPC EGAN FETs, very cool, very practical. Arc lamps, very cool, very impractical, but they do work for roasting marshmallows. So since I'm using tungsten electrodes, which contain thorium, which is mildly radioactive, might actually not want to eat the marshmallow thusly roasted. So we've got a controlled current source, and we've been using it to make an arc lamp, could we also use it to arc weld? Well, we turned up the current. Let's give it a shot. EPC EGAN fits. Let's check them out. Thank you for watching.